Good evening. Welcome to Grandview Baptist Church. It's a joy to see each and every one of you here this evening. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a couple of songs as we begin our service tonight. We're going to start off with just over in the glory land. We have three verses tonight. Page 85 in the hymn book. Words are on the screen as well. Let's join our voices together on this great song. Let's sing it out together. Ready? I go home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy to sing. It's been a while on this one. We've got two verses tonight. Let's join our voices together as we sing Mansion Over the Hilltop. Here we go. Let's sing it together. Ready? I'm satisfied with just a cottage we
thank you. Well, it's certainly good to have each one of you here with us. God bless you. Uh, we have been so fortunate throughout this summer to have the attendance up, and I guess we have to come to the place where a few of the weeks we're going to have a lot of people gone on vacation, but we're just thrilled to have each one here and thank the Lord for that. Let me mention we had a great time yesterday, the senior saints, a great crowd and great spirit and what a blessing to fellowship together around uh, good American food, hamburgers and hot dogs. It's hard to beat that with all the trimming. So it was a delicious time and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, be mindful of the fact that youth camp is coming up uh, very soon in about two weeks and teenagers are preparing for that raising funds, trying to gather their uh, money together. If anyone wants to help along those lines, if you'll just uh, give online to Youth Camp, uh, Brother TJ will make sure to dole it out where it's best needed. And uh, we don't ever try to pay every all of somebody's way. They got to work, work and get some of it and uh, bring a little bit of it to the table, but we try to help where we can. And we always have done that, and God has blessed it, and we appreciate that. Uh, we had such a good time at Vacation Bible School last Wednesday. As we met together, we had 522 people in here, counting the kids and their parents and their workers. And let me just say, if you were a worker there, we just thank you so very, very much. It took about 120 workers each night to make things work but things went so smooth. What a blessing it is each and every time. Well, we are going to have Brother uh, uh, TJ come, and he's going to give us the prayer for the offering. So ushers, if you'll come, he'll also tell us about maybe a teen activity tonight, and then um, he'll share about the soul winning today that took place and how many got saved. And then he'll lead us in a word of prayer. And then the youth choir, we're looking forward to that. Thank you, Pastor. We are excited. Uh, we have two interns on staff uh, here at Grandview Baptist Church. They are here this summer, uh, Wesley and Derek, and they've been working hard this week. Uh, they have been in Woodburn helping our uh, site church there and Pastor Holman and his family. And so our interns have been every day uh, driving to Woodburn, uh, inviting people to a special Sunday service. We'll be praying for that. The teenagers today were able to go to Woodburn as well, help out, pass out flyers. We, we passed out about 500 flyers for that church event coming up. And uh, we're also, as they're out, they're looking for people who might be out and about, uh, walking down the sidewalk, standing at their house, whatever it might be, uh, to invite them to church. And also, if they're able uh, to present the gospel to them. And today, uh, our teenagers were able to see nine people personally pray and trust Jesus Christ as their Savior while out in Woodburn inviting people to church. And so we're always excited here at Granby Baptist Church to see people saved, to see people saved, to, to give the gospel. And so your teenagers, uh, we're doing that today, and we are very proud of them for that. Uh, as Pastor mentioned, be praying. We do have teen camp coming up. Uh, right now we've got about 60 teenagers uh, who have signed up. We'll be taking two buses down to California uh, to, to church camp. Uh, for those of you church members, the camp we go to, you say, well, Brother T-Day, it's in California. It's kind of a far drive. Uh, that's because this camp... Uh, I believe here in California, Oregon, Washington, this, this side of the country, uh, flies in the best speakers uh, of any camp that I know of. And the young people get to hear from about six or seven different pastors, youth leaders from around the country that they fly in. If there was a place who had better preaching, I'd take our teenagers there. But I don't know anywhere else that has that great of a lineup. And, of course, the chaos, the craziness, the lack of sleep, all of that wonderful stuff that comes with teen camp as well. Be praying for us. That's coming up the first week of August. We're looking forward to that. With all that being said, let's have a word of prayer. We'll take up the offering. We'll get to hear our teenagers sing tonight. Dear Lord, we love you. God, as you can see, Lord, we are a church. Uh, Lord, although not perfect, Lord, we do have a heart for you. We love your word. Uh, we love the preaching of your word, God. We love uh, sharing the gospel with our community and people we come into contact with. Lord, would you bless our church family tonight? Uh, and Lord, as we give our offering... And our tithes, Lord, we ask you to take these things and that, God, just as you did in the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, you take uh, what little we have and what little we can give and that, God, you would just multiply it and use it in a great and mighty way, Lord, as we try to reach uh, our community 
with the gospel and also uh, get the gospel around this world through missions. We love you, Jesus. Please bless our service tonight. In your precious name, amen. This time the teenagers are dismissed and college and career gap class is dismissed as well. Tonight we are going to hear from one of our interns, Derek Tarr. Uh, Derek has joined with us uh, 
His home church is in Arkansas, Jacksonville, Arkansas. And he's been here um, shortly after college let out and is with us for 10, 11 weeks and we're excited to hear him. We like to give our interns all the experiences in the world. So they've had experiences tearing down uh, walls, painting, building up, carpeting, uh, maybe trim. Uh, I taught some this morning uh, how to lay trim along the uh, carpet. And so I did a little of it and they did the rest of it. And so uh, we want them to have a full uh, knowledge of what it is to pastor a church. Because usually you do not have a large staff when you take over or when you go to a church. You're usually it. And maybe a layman that volunteers a little bit. Uh, Brother Derek uh, has done a great job. He lives with Vicki and I in our guest room, and we have enjoyed getting to spend time with him, have devotions with him, and, and see him grow in the Lord. So it's with great uh, excitement I introduce to you Derek Tarr. Let's give him a hand. All right, like he said, my name is Derek. Um, I'm originally from Arkansas. Born and raised there, and uh, come on here, right, brother Colby, move it up. Okay, all right. So uh, we're actually going to be in uh, Joshua. We're going to be talking about a little bit about Caleb um, and his purpose. Um, but before then, let me just tell you a little bit about um, just how it was a blessing to my heart before, um, because this message I I don't really like sharing messages that have not been a personal help to me um, in the past. And there's just a couple things um, about this story that just hits home different for me. Um, but like I said, though, I'm from Arkansas originally, and uh, a church there that my pastor has, has been a pastor for about 30 years. He's been faithful there, and uh, he's never forgotten his purpose, his prom the, the things um, that God has, has wanted him to do there. And uh, he's never backed down from it. He's never done anything like that. Um, but... Like I said, or as Pastor said, um, I've been interning for the summer and uh, for the last seven, eight weeks. And um, by far, this is my least favorite experience right here, right now. Um, so if you'll bear with me tonight, I hope you don't hear me, um, but you hear um, just something that God has done in my life and maybe you're able to apply it to yours. Um, but like I said, though, we've been doing multiple different things. Um, we've been doing a lot of visiting, a lot of soul winning, and uh, it's, it's just good to see people get saved. And it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what time it is, it doesn't matter who you are, but people need to hear the gospel. And when we go out visiting a lot, as we do, um, we do here and we do in college as well, um, on the weekends, on Saturday and on Sunday, and uh, we're able to see lives changed. And that's a good purpose. I love that purpose. And, and there's a, um, it's just something that's always an encouragement to me because it's not, um, anything that I can do, but it, it's God working in the hearts. And many times um, I'm able to share the gospel with people, but I fumble through it a little bit or I mess up and I'm like, well, maybe maybe they won't actually hear, maybe they won't get saved because of something I did. Because we're not worthy to share the gospel. I wasn't worthy of the gospel that I received. I wasn't worthy of being saved. But because I can share it, because uh, it's not necessarily... Uh, that I'm able to be used because of something that I am, but because of, of God working through me. So, well, hopefully we'll get to that tonight. Um, but uh, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity that I've had to stay here, to learn here, um, to learn from Pastor, to, to see the, the home that he has with Miss Vicki. And that's obviously something I want to have eventually. And uh, the Vestals as well, just um, great encouragements to me. And for the TJ and his, his boldness, that's something that I would like to, to emulate when uh, I get older, starting now. Um, but you know Brother TJ, and you know he's not, a, he's not ashamed to tell you anything that he thinks, anything that he believes. And that's something that I would like to implement in my life. And um, I, th I just think of Brother Cameron, his practical, um, his practical Bible knowledge. His, he, pre he preached a couple Wednesdays ago, and um, I, just, I just love hearing Brother Cameron speak because it's so practical. It's, it's intelligent, it's deep, but... It's practical, and we can apply it very easily. So I love Brother Cameron and uh, just uh, his, his encouragement there. And uh, Brother Hoxie, all the things that he does. Um, you guys have 
a little bit of <laughs> what Brother Hoxie does. You guys are able to see it um, up close, and maybe you're able to experience it, but you don't realize who did it. And uh, Brother Hoxie is actually a, a hero behind the scenes as well. Uh, many times um, there's things in the church that get done a lot quicker or actually get done completely because of Brother Hoxie. And uh, I just want to thank him for being his encouragement as well. And uh, all the Sunday school teachers, one of our things that we've been doing as interns is we've been going to different Sunday school classes every week. And uh, that's one of my favorite things because you get off the bus and you're with like these kids and they're all going crazy. And then you come inside and uh, there's adults. You can actually talk to adults. It's great. So I love coming to Sunday school classes and hearing all of your different speakers and all of the different personalities and how God uses the personalities of those speakers um, to convey his gospel and how you guys are faithful to those Sunday school classes. It's really an encouragement to me as well. And then uh, just Connor with the kids, my, my major in college is actually youth ministry and assistant pastoral um, because I'm not sure if the Lord will want me to actually be a pastor by myself, um, but probably help a pastor because I like looking at a man, seeing something that I can help him with, and then trying to support him, support his work. Um, so I think that's what God's wanted me to do. So I, I just really appreciate what Connor's doing, even right now with the kids. And I uh, just thank you for the opportunity that I've had to, to work with him as well. All right. So like I said, though, we're going to be in Numbers. And uh, in Joshua, we're going to go to Joshua 14, 7 first. And we're going to talk a little bit about Caleb. And Caleb is one of those men in the Bible that he wasn't necessarily the main character, if you could say. He had a little bit, a small chapter, a couple different verses where he was the main character, where he was um, the main person that those verses were about and that those passages were about. And, uh, but he wasn't necessarily, he wasn't Joshua, he wasn't Moses, he wasn't the main leader in the front all the time. But he was underneath Joshua, and he would always support him in the things that he did. I don't believe that Joshua or Moses and Aaron would have been the leaders that they would have been if, if Caleb wouldn't have been there if Caleb wouldn't have been the same person for the whole time that we're able to, to look at his story. And uh, so that's why this story has been an encouragement to me, because you don't have to be a leader in the front, you can be a leader in the back. And I just really appreciated that about Caleb. All right. So um, when I was thinking about who I was preaching to tonight, I was um, realizing that all of you are going to be probably more experienced in the ministry than me, probably a little bit older, um, maybe a little bit wiser. Probably all of you are a lot wiser than me. But um, I was just thinking about how inadequate I was, but I was talking to one of my friends. His name um, was Bill Warner. He was actually a Vietnam veteran. Um, he was 83 years old, and he actually passed away this last year. But he was one of my best buddies, and I absolutely love Brother Bill, one of the greatest guys you've ever met. And uh, he was always excited about everything he did, everything that, uh, and then everything that the church did. He was always the first person to get behind it, always the first person to push it. And um, he also loved to golf, so he was definitely my buddy there too. So I would go golf with Brother Bill um, anytime we had like a, a church car wash. Um, I don't know if you guys do those here, but we had a car wash pretty much every camp year, and that would be our main fundraiser would be a car wash, and. It was a free car wash, but you would accept donations. And Brother Bill, every year, he would bring both of his vehicles. He had a Ford Fusion, like 80s old Ford truck. And uh, he would bring both vehicles, and he would pay us 100 bucks to wash each vehicle. I don't know why, but it was because, uh, looking back, it was because he loved us, and he wanted to encourage us. And, uh, but one thing that he used to tell me is, and it really broke my heart when he would tell me this, he would always tell me, Derek, I don't know why I'm still here. He was 83 years old. He, was, he had a lot of people um, had passed on before him. Obviously, his wife, um, his wife had passed away as well. His wife was already in heaven. She was a Bible-believing Christian. And one of the reasons that, she was act that he actually got involved in church. And, uh, and it was really, it kind of hurt me. I'm not going to lie. It, it, because I knew how much of an encouragement he was to me. And uh, so I was thinking about you guys today. I was thinking about um, the older people in the church. And what is something that I could share with you that you might, you might enjoy, that you might be able to learn from 
um, that you might be able to apply to your life. And uh, one thing that I think spans every generation, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter how old, how old you are, how young you are, um, how new you are to Christianity, one thing that we must have is a purpose, okay? And all of us have a purpose. So we're going to look at Caleb, and uh, we're going to look how he, at how he stayed with his purpose and uh, how he followed his purpose and um, some of the things that God did in his life, all right? So we're going to look at verse 7 first and go through verse 15. It says, Forty years old was I when I when was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's for ever. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephna, Hebron, from an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephna, the the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kerjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. All right, so um, what we see here is we see multiple different things um, about Caleb's life that he's able to reflect on in Joshua 14. And uh, one of those was in Numbers. Um, when he got the promise from God, obviously you guys know the story of Caleb, and uh, you know the story of Joshua, how they were sent into the land where they had a purpose, and that purpose was to spy out the land and come back and tell Joshua how to conquer it. Their purpose wasn't to go in and tell Joshua if they should. It was how to, not if they should. It wasn't conditional on, on what they thought. They were just supposed to go look. They were supposed to come back with the report of how to conquer. And that's one thing that Caleb and Joshua both did. They both knew their purpose. They both knew that. And they both came back to encourage the people. And that's what they did. And uh, it says um, in, in verse 2 uh, of Numbers 14, it says, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in this wilderness? And that's a pretty sad verse as well, because they had, brought, they had been in captivity for all of their lives. They had been uh, delivered from that captivity in a way that obviously God had done. It, they had seen ten plagues. Um, they had seen Pharaoh actually release them, which nobody just... In, in, that, in that time, obviously, slaves were uh, property, and uh, they, were, um, they were a net worth essentially. And I don't know about you, but I haven't heard about any millionaires, any kings, any, any uh, presidents, well, some presidents, um, uh, any kings just giving away all of their net worth. And that's what they were able to see. They were able to see um, God humble a man that was super prideful, that um, thought of himself as a God, that his people thought of him as a God. And uh, they were able to see that. Um, but through that, they still said, would to God that we had died in the wilderness. And uh, that's just something that they saw, and they, they turned back on what they were promised. And uh, so, so God um, tells them in, in verse 23 of Numbers, it says, Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. And uh, that's exactly what happened. They wandered in the wilderness. You know the story. Forty years they, they spent in the wilderness, and uh, they spent the rest of their lives just wandering around, not having a purpose. 
And uh, because the purpose that God had called them to do, they forgot it. When it was the chance to fulfill the promise, when, it was the, when they had a chance to fulfill that purpose, and to actually do what their whole lives, what, what 400 years of, uh, of Israeli people had dreamed of, and, and they forgot it in that moment. And um, a couple of them had uh, realized it after they uh, denied what God told them to do. Um, and the Bible tells us that they went back into the land, they tried to conquer it, and uh, they, they were killed. And a uh, multiple of them, um, I don't remember the verse, but, um, and uh, that's just something that is an encouragement to me, just keep going. And uh, when God tells you um, to do something, the time is now. It's not, maybe I should wait just a little bit, it's, it's the time is now. And I think of many soul winning stories where um, the Lord has convicted my heart, about maybe going to talk to a person. And uh, sometimes I say, well, Lord, it's raining outside. Why would I get out of the car? It's raining outside. They don't want to be outside either. They're not going to listen to what I have to say. But multiple times um, I've actually done that. I've actually, when I've uh, been convicted of the Holy Spirit to go share the gospel, I've, I've gotten out. And uh, when that time is now, I've gotten out at the correct timing. And uh, I've been able to see many people saved, um, even here. Um, in Indiana and in Arkansas, just multiple different stories of how God is, um, how he's orchestrated the day, uh, like the whole day, just so I could meet that one person. And uh, looking back, it's really awesome to see um, one of those. Um, his name is Angel, and uh, this was in Arkansas maybe four or five years ago now. And he was uh, a young man, and uh, he was just outside walking his dog. And it was raining outside. Um, I was just bus visiting on a normal Saturday with my youth director, who was my bus captain at the time. And we were visiting one of our, our main prospects, one of our uh, main people that would ride on the bus. And they didn't answer that day. So we had to go back to them um, just to see if we could catch them again. And the second time we went back, it was raining outside. I did not want to get out of the car because it's raining. Who wants to get wet? So I, uh, I kind of stayed in the car for a little bit. Um, as my youth pastor went up to see um, the people that were uh, our normal prospects. And he got out of the car, went to the one side of the street. And I look over, and there's a kid walking his German Shepherd. And normally when I'm visiting, anytime I'm visiting, I see people outside, and I, I love to talk to them because God have brought, has brought them outside, and uh, they're, already, they're already halfway open to the gospel. Um, if you're door knocking and you knock on the door, they have to actually open the door. And, uh, but if, if they're already outside, you can already talk to them, and they, they can't run away. Well, they can. Um, but, and uh, so I was, uh, it was just, God pricked my heart, and he said, so this young man's eternity is, is worth less to you than you like five minutes getting in the room. And so I was like, okay, you don't have to get that personal about it. I'll get out. So I got out of the car. And I went over and I started talking to, just talking to him. Um, I talked to him about his dog. He had like six ferrets. Anyways, a bunch of different story. I just talked to him for maybe four or five minutes. And then I asked him if he had a church that he got to go to anywhere. He said no. So I was like, this is perfect. I'll invite him to my church. So I invited him to my church. He said uh, he would like to come on Sunday. And, uh, but he had one problem. He said his mom, he had, I had to talk to his mom. His mom only spoke Spanish. Okay. I do not speak Spanish, no hablo español, okay? So I had to go find um, a person in our church that could help me follow, that could help me follow up with that person um, to get him in church. But I, I knew that I had to go do that. But um, I knew maybe I wouldn't actually be able to see him tomorrow. Maybe he wasn't able to come on Sunday. And uh, so I decided to witness to him, and I asked him if he ever... Um, asked Christ into his heart. He said no. So I shared the gospel with him. He was able to get saved. All that to say, if I would have missed God's timing, if I would have missed God's placement, I would not have been able to fulfill the purpose that I had for that day. It was a relatively unproductive day. Um, but for Angel, I think it was a pretty productive day. He, he now had a home in heaven. And uh, there's just multiple different stories like that. Um, I think of a guy in, in uh, Chicago named Joseph um, just a great guy that I was able to meet. Um, and then there's, other, there's been some people here as well. Um, the kid literally stood in the pouring rain 
with me for about 10 minutes um, as I was able to share the gospel with him. That was uh, during the, the teen marathon soul winning and uh, the teen soul winning marathon. And uh, that was just great encouragement as well. But all that to say, when God has put a, a, a purpose in your heart and he's promised that um, he will be with you, he's promised that his word won't return void, he's promised certain things. You have a purpose, otherwise you wouldn't be here. God has left us here because he wants us to share the gospel. And that's something that we must do. And it is not just um, a suggestion, but it's a, it's a commission, it's a command. Um, so uh, just an encouragement to me, an encouragement to you. Um, continue to, to follow your purpose um, because all of us have a purpose. And uh, let's look at uh, some of the things that Caleb could have been distracted by when um, before before he got his purpose and uh, before he got to fulfill his purpose. Okay, So Caleb would have been, at this time, um, when he first went into spy at the land, he would have been around 40 years old. And um, obviously he would have been an adult in Egypt. So he was raised in Egypt as a slave. He was able to see God deliver um, the whole children of Israel from Egypt. And then he was able to see um, Israel deny what God had wanted them to do. And uh, we already looked at that in Numbers. They, they denied what um, and where God wanted them to go. And uh, they, he saw them waste their lives. And uh, so that was one thing. He saw Israel forgot their purpose in num- for, forget their purpose in Numbers. Um, he was able to see Korah swallowed up in Numbers. Um, he was able to see 14,700 dying by the plague. Um, in the wilderness, he was able to see Aaron's budding rod. He was able to see the death of Miriam. Um, he was um, able to live through the water from the rock and Moses' sin. And he was able to see how Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. Um, he was able to see Edom destroying Israel's passage, the death of uh, Aaron. Um, the serpent of brass, Israel's defeat of Og and uh, Sihon, Balak and Balaam. He was able to see Israel's idolatry, how they worshipped um, other gods and uh, put other gods before their own God. He was able to see Joshua appointed to succeed Moses. And uh, obviously he probably would have been one of his best friends. He would have um, been one of the only people that was the same age that would have went into Israel with um, Caleb. So they would have probably been best buddies, in my mind at least. Um, he was able to see uh, the killing of the Midianites. And uh, through all these things, he never forgot his purpose. He never forgot that God had promised him that he was going to go into the land of Israel, and what he stepped his foot on, he was going to be able to accomplish. He was able to see the golden calf. He was able to see the the clean and unclean animals and how God had told him, um, this is what you can eat, this is what you can't eat. He was able to see the tithe laws. And uh, I think that when uh, Caleb was learning all these things, he was thinking, okay, well, when I get my mountain, when when I fulfill my promise, when I fulfill uh, my purpose and I'm able to see God's promise come to fruition, he said, I'll be able to tithe on it. And uh, he was able to see the, the death of Moses. He was able to see the two spies sent into Jericho. And um, I, I kind of wonder, what was Caleb thinking when those two spies went into Israel or when they went into Jericho? I believe he was praying. I know it would have been a little bit different um, in those times than, than us praying now, but I think that he would have been um, praying for those people to come back and be encouraging and um, be uh, telling them that, that you can go. Like, uh, this is the time, now is the time to go. He was able to see the fall of Jericho. Uh, he was able to see Achan's sin. He was able to destroy um, Ai with the people of Israel. He was able to, um, to witness being tricked by Gibeon. He was able to see the sun standing still. After all that, that all that he had seen in his past, he never forgot what God, what God had called him to do. And uh, that's something that we should do um, as young people, as old people. We have a purpose, and that purpose is to wholly follow the Lord our God. And uh, and uh, Let's look at uh, the definition of a purpose. It says, something set up as an object or end to be attained, a subject under discussion or an action in course of execution, 
to propose as an aim to oneself. So Caleb got his promise in, uh, in Numbers, and in, uh, in, in Joshua he was able to recount that. And uh, he got his purpose, and his purpose was to wholly follow the Lord my God. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. And uh, many times I know I get, to, I get distracted by certain things. A um, couple years ago, a couple summers ago, I was able to um, renovate an RV. And I was able to renovate it for my mom. Um, but when you're renovating something, you find more problems underneath the problems that you thought you were going to be able to fix. Okay? And uh, I, th- I just think that uh, Caleb probably would have been doing the same thing. He probably would have been um, encouraging people, yeah, we got to keep going, we got to keep going to the land of Israel. And then he was able to see a lot of their unbelief. He was able to see um, things like that that um, would have been completely in contrast to what God wanted them to do. And, uh, but he was able to witness um, them forget their promise. And uh, Caleb saw God's preservation and used his time to prepare. And uh, that's what I like to do as a young man. Um, I'm able to um, recognize that God has preserved you guys um, to be an encouragement to me. And uh, whether you realize it or not, you are being here tonight. And you are being here multiple different Wednesday nights. And uh, you're an encouragement to your pastor as well. You're an encouragement to the staff. And uh, whether you realize it or not, you are. And uh, that's one purpose that you guys have here tonight. And um, he's seen wars. He had seen God's blessing. He had seen cursing. He had seen God fulfill his promise. And, uh, but he used that time to prepare. And uh, the things that he was able to see, he was able to see wars, like I said. And uh, he referenced that later when he said, my strength is like it was 45 years ago. He said, I'm still ready to go. I'm still ready to, to go out there. I'm still ready to, in our case, in our, I'm ready to witness. I'm ready to, to take on um, the world. Um, or, as some people say, charge hell with a wet mop. Um, but he had... He was able to see God's blessing. He was able to see um, certain promises that God had fulfilled. Um, he said that they were still going to go into the land of Israel. He said that it was going to take them a while and that everybody from that generation was going to pass away. And uh, could you imagine being the last person of that generation and the younger people looking at you and they're like, well, once he passes away, then we can go into the land of Israel. Then we can go into the promised land. Anyways, that was a little... Um, but he was able to see uh, God's blessing. He was able to see what God had done in the past. He was able to see God's protection. And um, uh, Israel had been attacked multiple times um, in the wilderness. They had um, tried to pass through different spots in the wilderness. And they had uh, things like that that he was able to see them uh, go through. And uh, it just strengthened his resolve. To, to remember his purpose, to remember the promise that God had made. And uh, he had seen God's cursing. He had seen that, that God is a just God and uh, that he will keep his promises, but he will also um, deal correctly with the people that, that uh, sin or forsake him. And uh, it was obviously an encouragement to him to, when he gets back to the land of Israel, to not back away, to just push forward this time, have absolutely no regrets, no, no reserves, and uh, just go full, full steam ahead into the land of Israel. And then he had seen many promises fulfilled, many, many promises. Um, he had seen them actually get to go back in and actually get to defeat Jericho. He had been dreaming about it for 45 years, and he was able to see that come to pass. He was able to see them defeat AI after a certain couple of hiccups, um, as we all know. Uh, but he was able to see what God had done in his life, he was able to see what God had done in other people's lives, and he was able to uh, follow God's promise there. So, um, in closing, our, our encouragement to you tonight is uh, we're all still here for a purpose. Um, find yours and uh, never forget it in all of life's distractions. We'll go back to my story about Brother Bill, um, my friend. He, the one that said, I don't know why I'm still here. Um, well, Brother Bill spent a couple more years after the last time I heard him say that 
um, on earth, still being an encouragement, um, still encouraging people um, more than I think he realized. But one thing that God had in his future that we hadn't seen, that he didn't know was going to happen, was about a year and a half before he passed away, his, one of his sons was able to move back to Arkansas. He was in North Carolina, um, and they were uh, slightly distanced from each other. They weren't um, as much in communication as they wanted to be, or as much as Brother Bill wanted to be in. And uh, his son was not in church as much as he needed to be. And, um, but he was able to move back. He was able to move to Arkansas and uh, be able to spend more time with Brother Bill. And uh, to be able to spend time with Brother Bill, you were able to see God's love working through him and uh, God's, uh, God's hand moving in his heart. And he was always an encouragement to me, always an encouragement to the different golf courses that he would go to. And uh, any time I would go golfing with Brother Bill, um, he would invite somebody to church every time. Um, and multiple times, we were able to see visitors, actually. Um, but also multiple times, when he would invite people to church, um, they would say, Bill, I already told you no. So in other words, he was already witnessing to them. He had, it wasn't just witnessing when he was with us, um, but he was witnessing when he was by himself. And he was able to see multiple different people saved um, from his golf ministry, as he would call it. So, um, but Brother Bill was able to see his son come back, and now his son, um, from my understanding, is still in our church. He's still serving our church. Um, he goes two or three times a week when his job allows him. And uh, that was Brother Bill's purpose. And he didn't realize it then, but he realized it before he passed away. So let me just be an encouragement to you tonight. You guys have a purpose. You, you, obviously, you fulfilled many different things um, in your past. You've been able to see God overcome great things in your life, more things than um, I might even be able to witness in my future. You've already been through it, and you've already um, seen God's promises. You've already seen his blessings. You have already seen... Um, spiritual wars that you've been able to come through as, as a victor, and uh, you've, been art, you've already been through certain trials that I've never been through. But you still have a purpose, and you still have um, God's promise. And uh, that purpose is to still fully um, and wholly follow God's word and uh, follow him to the best of your ability. And that's something that I've been trying to learn to do and uh, something that I don't think any of us can ever attain. But that's our purpose. Our purpose is to fully and wholly Follow the Lord and uh, follow his word. And um, it's not going to chase you down. It's, it's, it's a book. You've got to read it. If you're not reading it, if you're not staying in it, then the problem is on you. Um, I heard one pastor tell us, and he told me this actually. He said, um, he said, Derek, you have as much God in your life as you want in your life. And that's one thing that's, I've tried to use to direct my life. Um, you have as much God as you want in your life. And uh, because you can seek him or you cannot seek him. You can, you can find him as he promised or you, you cannot find him because you don't seek him. Um, so just encouragement to you tonight. You have a purpose. Your purpose is to wholly follow the Lord your God. And you don't know what God's going to do in your future. Um, even though you might be older, you might, be, um, you might think you have... Uh, everything else in your life planned out in the future. But maybe you have a person in your life that God is still working on, that he wants to bring to church, and he wants to use you guys to do it. And he wants to use your testimony to do it, and you're the only person that can do it. And if you don't follow God, who's going to follow God, and who, who's going to be the witness to them? Okay? And uh, that's all I got for you tonight. Uh, but... If, uh, if you'd like, you can bow your head, close your eyes, and um, I know this sermon was an encouragement to my heart um, when I was studying it, and uh, maybe, you, maybe you haven't seen your purpose because you haven't met the purpose giver. You haven't met the person that, uh, that is giving the purpose, that, that is knowing you, and uh, loves you, and uh, maybe you haven't been able to witness to people because you don't have the light in you. And um, if uh, if that is you tonight, and uh, you'd like, you can raise your hand. And some of us would love to come to you, share the gospel with you, 
let you know how much God loves you. Um, let, let us let you know um, how he died for you and uh, things like that. And um, uh, if it's been an encouragement to your heart, just uh, ask God to renew your purpose and uh, fulfill um, uh, your promise and uh, things like that in your heart. Just help him to be, uh, let, him, let him guide you and uh, help you follow him um, in all that you have and all that you do. And um, because, like I said, he's not gonna he's not gonna chase you down necessarily. It's a book you got to seek him, and uh, you have to find him. Lord, we thank you for this, for this night. Thank you for the service that we were able to attend tonight. And uh, thank you for these people listening so attentively. And um, I ask that um, something I was able to say tonight is an encouragement to them. And uh, they're able to apply something that they've learned um, to their lives and uh, help us to uh, come back and uh, be faithful to your church and uh, faithful to your house on Sunday. And uh, bring us back and we'll praise you all for everything that we're able to see you do. You may pray. Amen. 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 You're dismissed.